So for yesterday, he can't goes to the chemist before he gets there and he gets sexual jelly, <laughs> right? And he fills it up and it's really heavy, right? But it doesn't, you know how the, 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 these ones, you do it and it just all comes out and it's all over the place? The other one, it, the, the sexual jelly doesn't, but you've got to put it on every time. Oh, it doesn't But you've only got to go like that and it's and on right. and there's no blobs, there's nothing. Alrighty guys, so today, as by popular demand, we are changing Greg's string. So we've got the main man, Greg. To Gre I'm Gary. Uh, uh, Gary. That's Greg. Gary. I'm Greg. Sorry, Greg's over here. <laughs> Gary's over here. <laughs> and we've got uh, everyone here ready to go. So now Gary can take over and change Thank you. the strings. All what, right. was, what was the problem? Oh, We're getting well, the major peep, the peep, peep rotation. We, yeah, we had major problems with Greg's peep. Um, a few months ago there, you saw me do the new center serving and the D-loop on, on the channel. And then we noticed the serving at the end of the cams was coming loose, coming pretty ordinary. So with Greg coming up to the Nationals and that about probably, what, six weeks out, I decided to do the end serving. Now I took the string off, didn't touch it. I, I crank the strings up when I serve them on a on a ratchet ties at my place between poles. I reserve the ends, and ever since I've done that, we've had major problems with this, the peak twist, and it's, it's at 180 degrees at the moment. And it didn't matter what I did, twist in, twist out of the string, it still did it. You could actually, Greg would be at full draw, and you'd actually see the peak turning around. And I think this is probably a lot of the problems with what we saw with Greg's impact points just changing bit by bit. Um, so we've got to get rid of them. We're lucky, to Greg's credit, it didn't affect him at the Nationals. He he, he just used the, the adjusting of the peep before he drew as part of his, sight, his shoot process um, and it didn't phase him. So that was good. We we were going to change the string there when he came back, but he had the had the club championships and a qualifying ranking event. So. PB, and and he still shot PBs. <laughs> I've had to change my thinking on Greg being him, and I think he might be a machine, to no, be honest. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, well, I'll, I'll just... Here he, come on, come on here. This this is going to be my indoor bow. This is the one that I broke the Australian indoor record with last year. But I'm going to drop the poundage down to 55. We're going to do that now and set it up just to shoot indoor. But um, I think Gary, I think, I think I um. I think I might fold under pressure. Under what pressure are you under? Well, well, look, we had a QRE on Sunday, yep. and I shot 676, which is 106 rating, twice exactly the same score. Then I went on Monday in disgust. I went down and I shot a 702. So don't tell me that it's it's it has to be the pressure of competition. I have to. No, it's Scott Buscombe's fault. Bingo. There you go. Mr. No, Mr. Buscombe is pushing you to perform. Is he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've got bad news for Scott then. <laughs> All right, get, getting back to the subject at hand. Originally, I was only going to change the mainstring on Greg's bow because when you do the whole lot, you've got too many factors to move, that move with the string settling and time, synchronising timing, blah, blah, blah. We, we've done... Um, the spec on the check on the specs, the axle axle is actually 41, which is supposed to be 40, but the brace height's spot on. Um, Greg's just been on the phone to Pat Coglin and he assures us that 40.75 is okay. So we're going to stick with the cam positions or the cam timing in this position here and go back to around that. And obviously, with the string settling, we'll have adjustments to make in or out. But Pat Coglin has told us with the strings that he makes, uh, no twists out, maximum of 10 twists in. So this is what we've got to do. You've got to listen to the people that know what they're talking about. Definitely he does. Um, so we're going to set the bow up uh, with those specs in mind and just see how it comes out, bearing in mind that any changes in cable lengths, string lengths, affects draw lengths and everything else. So it's going to be a bit of a mission, but we're going to have a go at it. Now, the first thing I generally do if I'm changing strings, cables, whatever on bows, given that we've given that we've got some issues with maybe the cam timing as such, but what I usually do, I'll put a paint pen mark each side of the limb on the cam, both cams obviously. That way then when we set the bow back up with all the new cables, at, at least we've got a starting reference as to where it was originally. <laughs> We're just getting the 
just getting the poundies. So that's the plan. I've, I've measured the axle to axle. I've measured the brace height. That's two other things that you really need to do. That way we can get the bow back within specs because that obviously affects your draw length, your poundage and all that. But there's always uh, fine tuning and setting up to get it correct. So we'll go, go through the process at the moment. We'll uh, I'll probably put the main string on first. Get Greg, Greg's handy little press out. These, these work quite well, these little hand presses. Yeah, with this uh, twisting issue with Greg's string, man, that was doing my head in. I've been doing this sort of thing with bows for 25 years, and I can't say I've ever had so many problems as what I've had with this. I even uh, there, out of desperation, I took the centre serving and the D-loop off, let the string settle, and then redid it, and that still didn't help. So it's been a real, real nightmare. But like I say, to Greg's credit, he, he put that out of his head and didn't worry him, so, and he... he Prove that by the way he shot at the nationals which was amazing so what um yeah so what i try to do too uh, Right, so we've got a fair bit of work doing here. We, we're going to put all the cables on and get the strings on, put a D-loop on it, get the bow within specs, in, into its original specs. And then we're not going to put the uh, peep side in, because what, what I want to do is get Greg to shoot arrows through it to make things settle before you start putting peeps in. That's generally what I try to do. Now, we've got the main string here. I might just put it on as it is, I won't uh, put any twists in it, so I know where we're at, because given Greg's draw length, we may have to leave it as it is. Peep sight top, okay. These are, um, these are good looking strings, they are definitely good stuff. You find what happens with the factory strings, they're, they're mass produced, um, and what, what happens, they make them up and all the cables, all the, all the string materials all straight so they do the end servings with the material all straight and what happens as you twist the string up and you start shooting that it, it settles the string actually gets a little bit thinner un thinner under the servings and this is why you find with your factory strings they start separating but i can see these strings here given they're a blue and black material i can actually see under the serving that's a blue and black configuration so these have been twisted before they've been served which is the way i like to do it as well that just makes sense Well, that's interesting straight off the bat. That string, the old string came off quite easy and that one's tight. We'll see what happens there. Obviously, there'll be a factor that it's gonna settle into the cam lobes and, the, and it will stretch a little bit. I've had to crank a fair bit more on that to get this new string on. Have you? Mm. which will uh, shorten the axle axle and anyway, we'll find out when we get it on. Yeah, a fair bit. Rightio. We've got the main string on. Yeah, that's rotated those cams around a fair bit more, Jimmy. Not a lot. Not a lot. I'm just curious as we've had we had probably half an hour of conversation before we started filming all, all this. Friendly conversation. That's <laughs> nah, it's it's a little bit over seven and a half, so mind you it'll still stretch a little bit with the not that they stretch a hell of a lot. Forty and a half. They shouldn't, stretch they shouldn't but they still settle. They settle into the 
yeah they don't stretch per se but they do settle into the into the lobes on the cams and all that all right originally i was like i said i was only going to do the main string because that's the the problem but given that given we're here and we're doing it we may as well do the whole lot and see what happens okay the yoke string we're gonna have to do a bit of yoke tune too jimmy bit of yoke tune. Sorry, I just pulled my mic off. So what are you doing with the indoor, Greg? Back to 55, is it? No, we're just trying to see what we can't, we can't work the scale. We're not changing that, we're just trying to work the poundage out. Oh, yeah. We can't work the scale out. Yeah, most most of the top guys with indoors do tend to shoot lower poundage on them. we have to check your spine on the arrows you use then, too. Sorry guys, I'm not doing much talking, I'm just, uh, when I come up with anything worth telling you, I'll let you know, but I'm just getting these strings on at the moment, all these cables, just concentrating on which way to run them. Oh yeah, that's the yoke cable done. Like I said, from the advice of uh, Pat Coglin who made these, I'm putting all these strings on as they are, no twists in. That way we've got our starting point if we have to do that. We have to put twists in to change. Obviously the, the cam synchronising is going to be a little bit out because it doesn't matter how good you are making strings, it's very, very difficult to get them exactly the right length. That's where the twisting comes into play, obviously. That one out of the way. It's a bit complicated here at the moment, Jimmy. I got strings. I got strings going everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, unless you've got decent bow press, or like a, a mounted bow press, it's a lot easier, but when you're doing a hand one, that's that's the old one. Yeah, that's allowed to come off that one. Maybe I should take them off and get them out of the way. Well, that's very interesting. These are a lot shorter. It's just because they have been stretched. Probably, they will stretch and settle, obviously, yeah. That goes without saying. But maybe that... You might bring the cams around a bit further too. Well, they, they look better where they sat, like compared to where yours are. Yours are a lot shorter in rotation than what Greg's were. But like, what concerns me is the actual uh, draw length now. Uh, that way, that's that one. That's that one, and that's that one. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing that concerns me, is the actual draw length. The Hello, dog. Come on. <laughs> well, there we go we've got them on straight away i can see the cam the time it came timing that's the position of the cams at rest um is different it's actually rotated it rotated them a bit less they're more sort of in the position where jimmy's are which is still okay by the look of it if these can, if these strings are built, yeah, they look nice strings. Yeah, they are. Exactly the same, doesn't it? Oh, it's a bit. There's a bit of rotate, bit more rotation there. They're not bad looking at that though. Like, I haven't drawn drawn it back to look the synchronising yet. But what we'll do, they definitely look better. I'm going to shoot so much better with those. You're better. You're not shooting very well at all. That's 41, 40 and three quarters. 
Yeah, seven, seven three quarters. Seven five eight. That was what we said, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's in spec now. We it's in spec. The timing. We're probably going to. I, I think looking at the the cam timing in this position, the synchronising. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of opinions on timing and synchronising. They're, they're two different things. I look at. I call the timing of that rest position of the bow, of the of the cam, because that is very important in itself. Because it needs to be within the specs to get the full energy effect of the cam and make and make the bow as quiet as it can be. Because you find if you've got this out, the bows tend to be a bit noisy and you get the full efficiency of the rolling over of the lobes where the axle point is. And when you draw the bow back and, you, and the cam stop, I call that the synchronizing to get them in sync. So they're two different things. There's a difference of opinions on that, but generally the, you know, draw them back, timing probably makes sense to me, but there, there's two different aspects of the cam positions and as they rotate. So you've got to sort of try to identify them separately. Look where the string stop, the cam silencer is. The strings, the limb oh, silencer, yeah. cuts come right off the limb. The only thing that's going to concern me looking at this now is the draw length. Because because we've rotated the cams a bit more, that actually shortens the draw. Did you move that? No. no. So that's higher. Yeah. That's further off the string purely because of the shorter axle axle and the cams rotated a bit more than what they were. Because at rest the cams were further around, so the string was closer. Yeah. But it's within the specs now. It's four, 40 and three quarters, which we were told is fine. And the brace height's 758, so that, that's fine as well. So we, we really have to start with the bow in spec. That's very important, like Jimmy found with his when he's done the changes recently. See, that was way out of whack. Pat said if you put those strings on, as is, they'll be dead on. Yeah. Well, I have done that. I've not put any twists in either of them to give us a starting line. But the only thing that's going to be the problem is, is the timing. Is, sorry, is the draw length. That's, so we're going to and check the poundage. The the touch and the cable of the, yep. the stops. Yep, we can do the timing. And then we've got to do a D-loop. We've got to put a D-loop. We're not going to, I'm not going to put a peep sight in initially. We'll shoot it without it to settle everything. Because what happens when you put peep sights in, when you slide them up and down the string, you, you twist, it rotates. So I'd rather get the string settled and put the peep in straight and give us a good starting point so there's the minor. Spot straight yeah, the that's what I try to do. It, it doesn't, doesn't always work, but you can only try. So we'll put a D-loop on it so that uh, Greg can um, use his, his release aid and do everything correctly. Let's look at that cam lens a little bit. Probably needs a few more twists in that one. It's not too bad. Oh, I don't like that thing. It just doesn't work. It's very hard to use this one. Really? Hmm. There's nothing wrong with that one. Nothing wrong with that one. It's the open instead of the close. Yeah, it's weird. I better get my tool bag. I need some paper clipper. I need some knocking string. I'm just going to wander off camera. <coughs> I've co I've just covered a bit of information on a video I was going to do with the cam time and synchronising. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the people need a bit of an explanation after yeah. that. Because that, um, I think the same thing. I think the cam timing and the synchronisation is a different thing. They are. That's how it starts and how it finishes. One's how it starts and one's how it finishes. Yeah, well, it's, it one, the, one's the rest. You want the yeah. synchronising, so you want That's it to right. finish at the same time. Yep. But then you want it to start at the perfect place. Exactly. Well. The, it's, it's the rotational starting position of the cam, so you get the full efficiency of the cam rolling over the lobes and the axle point on them so they are two different things and and the cam timing the rest position of the cam is very important too because it affects your brace height for a start What are, we, what are you talking? What are we doing? Yeah. What arrows are you shooting these days, Greg? I, I'm shooting the um, captain's tube. We'll in the tube? In the tube? The are they the same OD as the Pierce? Yeah. They are? That's all I want. Yeah. And your same knock, got the same knocks on you? No. <laughs> all right. Give me one of your yeah. platinums. So 
Yeah, how are you working out the height, Gary? Tell them how you work out the height. Yeah, I, I mentioned this on the last video when I did Greg's centre serving. I'm just setting up the top knocking point at the moment. And uh, I've mentioned before, I measured the diameter of the arrow, the OD of the arrow, half, half that, and the outer, the outer thickness of the knock, the width of the knock, and half that. Add them together, that gives me a starting point for the top knocking point. That gives you a square bow, a, sorry, a square arrow off the string. That's the theory I've always used, and it seems to work for me. And then any finer adjustments, if you get it a bit wrong, you do on your up and down on your rest then. Yeah, about six mil. It's about five. Gee, five and a half mil. Looks about it, just a touch under a quarter of an inch. Looks like this centre serving material is good stuff too, Greg. Well, they're meant to be the best. Yeah. Looking at what I'm seeing, I think I'd have to agree with that. They look pretty good. Definitely. Right, yeah, that's the top knock point tied off. Like I think I explained this before you to you guys. I, I like to put a very small knock, bit of knock, bit of serving material on to locate the knock, and then I put the D loop top and top and bottom of that. I see a lot of guys just put the D loop straight on the serving. You know, like I said before, they probably don't move, but I just like to locate the knock with a little bit of serving top and bottom and then put the D-loop on the outside of that. That way I know it's not going to slide. I, I used to get a bit, I never used D-loops, I have for the last few years now, but I only ever used to use the old idea with the, the cord off your release aid around the string. And that, that always worked. Us old heads, that's all we ever did, D-loops. Uh, D-loops didn't exist there. It's quite a new idea, the D-loop set up. Um, and I was always paranoid about the D loops coming loose. So what I used to do is, when I'd put one on, I'd I'd less release the tension on my main string, and I'd actually put a bit a needle through and actually sew the the D loop on, just one strand through it, because I was paranoid about it coming loose. But I'm not that paranoid anymore because I have never had one come loose. So I've given up on that idea. <laughs> that's that's my OCD kicking in. I just overthink everything. But as a lot of you guys now that have started this sport, even whether you're new to it or been around for a long time. Oh, well, I've seen something, Gary. There's always something to learn. Um, what, what's his name? Um, Guillantine. He said a thing about the knots at the bottom. He does two knots at the top and four knots at the bottom, and that gives you an equal hand position on the thing. He says if yeah. you do equal knots at the top of the bottom, your hand becomes too high to the knock. I've actually that noticed that. that with people that don't... Say. I've noticed that with people that use one knocking point as opposed to two with a D-loop. If you put the D, they usually put the D, one, one high knock for locate the knock, which is fine, and put the D-loop above that, but then the bottom of the D-loop sits on the bottom of the knock. And if you watch them at full draw, their D-loop is actually straight at the top and then on an angle at the bottom. And that's sort of along the lines of what he's talking that's about. That's what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it does change the position of, of how it comes back. Yeah, absolutely. Thank goodness we've got you guys. Oh. I didn't understand what he's talking about, but now I do. The angle yeah. of the D-loop, instead of being a perfect triangle. Exactly. And this is getting back to with my ACD about running the D-loop from one side of the string to the other. That, that just lessens the twist on the D-loop. If you got it straight, you've got maybe that much twist when you're at anchor. But then if you've got it running across, it just loosens it. Just releases that twist just that little bit. We talked about that when we first started doing D loops, didn't we? We did. Which, yeah. side, which side they should which be side on. Which side we put yeah. on? We, we rang someone too, didn't we? I think so, yeah. You must yeah. annoy a lot of people, do you, Greg, when you ring them? We they do. can look back. What? <laughs> you annoy a lot of people when you ring them up all the time. I asking. Love Greg's phone call. It's a bit. 
No, he, he ch chatted quite well. A couple of times. He's going to meet me one day and I'll be <laughs> looking at him down here. That's very good way <laughs> uh, it's good to talk to those sort of people, particularly like, like I was talking to Jimmy earlier this morning about uh, Scotty Buscombe being on the QRE video he just did. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge and hearing, getting information from the master, man, that's great. He's a good target too though. Yeah, well Greg's got him in his sights, yeah. And you always need someone <laughs> better than you are to make you, you better. Do. That's why I had you until you decided to... Be, to I don't know what. Stop training. Sneaking around with a bare bow, shooting under your legs. <laughs> <laughs> he went mental for yeah. crazy for <laughs> Six months or so. Yeah, Six months or so. Gone. And you, you left me. You just left me. <laughs> well, I'm back. He's, He's back. back. Good. And we've got to take up uh, the coaching with Jimmy yes, too. That's right. So that's going to be. Got that QRE. As a base point, like Barry. It's a great base point. We've been having some. Yeah, I tell you, it's plenty of room for improvement. <laughs> We've been having some you conversations. Shot one all gold end. I know it was shocking. Me and Jimmy have been having some conversations about the plan, and yeah, this is what this is for. There's going to be a bit of. Yeah, I know, but you can't. Oh, okay, for doing it like that. Oh well. And then you pull it that way. The trouble is with this, you can't get it in there to do that with it because it's too thick. And it stretches the D-loop too long. That's what I found when I tried using that last time. Yeah, you're right. Well, have you got another one that could make it? A pair of long nose pliers is all I use. I don't want a really big D-loop. No. There was a guy, um, I think it was at the Pan Pacific Games I saw him, so I was up in Queensland. Have a guess how long his D-loop would be. Have, no, have a guess how Mid. long. Mid. Have a guess how long his D-loop was. Uh, three inches. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. He's D loop. Well, this one of the guy, one I, the... I shot in Queensland, and there was this guy. His D loop was that long. He had some kind of camo bow. He was a you know like a yeah, was field. Was it still that big, or was it like that like big? A, it was that long. No, but it was like, like that. Just skinny like that. It was like that. What was he thinking? Where was his anchor point? Did you notice? Well, back here, but his string was, was there. there. Who knows what's Well, going one of the on top there. compounders, I don't know who the hell it was, but he actually has a D-loop on his, on his string, and, it, and it's not top and bottom of the arrow, it's under the arrow. Oh, yeah, that's a talkless D-loop. That's a different different thing again. You haven't had a go at the I've never tried it, no. Oh. no. Well, the theory behind that is it's impossible to talk a D -loop, talkless D-loop because it's only one thing. It's, it's, and it's so it's long, it's got, it's got a lot more play in it. Well, it yeah. doesn't matter how long it is, it's just because it's one, you can twist it, and it's just yeah. going to twist instead of twisting the string. Yeah. They call it the talkless D loop. You have to look that one up. Like. So here, in the old days, we used to just run a loop off the release aid under the, just knock the knocking point up to a knock, and then run that cord off your release aid up under it. But when you're at full draw, your your arrow was actually your string came down like that, and your arrow was like that off your string. Yeah. So you had to be careful what knocks you used. I think I went, spoke about this before. The biter knocks have got a groove to do that, but you couldn't use. Eastern pin knocks because they were too small in the throat and they pop off the string. Yeah, right. But that that worked served me well for forever until the D loop thing happened. I think the hunters were using D loops before the target guys started using them. But yeah, they they work. They don't come loose. That was my paranoid issue with them originally when I started using them was coming undone. But that doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, oh, that D loop's going to be a bit big, Greg. So got a little grippy bit on it, oh yeah. All right, we'll just burn that end off. Now the wind's dropped and I've got a bit of flame happening, that's good. Now I'm gonna try to get this thing inside to stretch it out. That all right? A bit too long, or is that okay? That's all right. That all right? Yeah. Right, yeah. So we've got the do the knocking position for Greg's arrows in place. We've got a do loop on there. We've got no peep in yet. Like I say, I like to shoot it a bit to get things to settle. We better do the cam synchronising. Can you uh, 
Put get an arrow release aid and yes, sir. draw the back so we can see where that's at because that no doubt will be wrong. I have trouble shooting Greg's arrow. I'm like one of those Japanese archers on horseback with a back ear. I can tell you straight up this is going to be too short in the draw length for you, Greg. And it's the poundage has gone off as well. Righty, I've just drawn Greg's bow back as you saw and I can see the timing issue first. Um, we've got to twist this cable up. While well, Greg's getting himself organised there. Can you get modules for these cams, Jimmy? Because I think now that we've got this axle to axle and the cam timing position in place, I think the draw is going to be too short. No, well, it's a slightly longer D loop, too. Yeah, it's not much longer, but. I just drew it back myself, Greg, and doing a change on the, the cam synchronising. I picked that up, just been able to pull it back myself. This, I've actually got to shorten one of the cables to bring the synchronising in play, so that will in turn lengthen the draw a little bit. Will be it a little bit. That's the thing with cables and strings. If you shorten your string, you will shorten your draw. If you lengthen your string, you will lengthen your draw. Bearing in mind that you need to keep your cam timing position in play. Some of the bows, I know my old Fanatic actually had two dots on the cams that was where you're supposed to keep your cables between. That, that way you knew the timing was spot on. I don't know about other, other brands of bows, but um, PSE, do that, PSE do that, Jimmy's telling me. So that's what you need. Yeah, it is. Sorry, mate, I dropped it on the ground. You need to be aware when you start doing that. And if you shorten your cables, you actually lengthen the draw. You lengthen your cables, you shorten the draw. It's the opposite to the main string. So what, are you doing now? so what I've got to do now, I've got to put a few twists in this cable, just to get the cam synchronising closer. There was quite one was quite a bit out to the other one. It's a bit of a hit and miss this type of thing. It's a bit of a process. You've got to um, trial and error. It's called trial and error. But I think the poundage is a bit lighter too, Greg. Shorter draw will give you a lighter poundage. And that's what I think we've found with it. Once you, uh, when you take cables and strings off, guys, too, before you start drawing the bow back, just make sure they're all in the right place. Uh, it's still... All right, we've still got a way to go. Three. Well, PB Field, 391. PB 1440 by 17 points. And I PB the indoor yesterday. Greg's got all these PBs happening. Three, three of them. Three of them. Big ones. You want to tell them what you shot yesterday in the Vegas round you shot? It wasn't a Vegas. It was, wasn't? It was a five spot if I... Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was a Vegas round. Yeah. Well, they'll see it. It's coming up. It'll come up soon. I, I documented the entire thing. So you may, am I going to make them wait for that? I think you should. Well, it's, it's not off the phone yet. Okay. Because Jimmy's got all my USBs. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, it, w w it, Jimmy, is the uh, Nationals up yet? No, no, that'll be tonight. Okay, tonight, tonight the Nationals are going up. 
that I shot at the Nationals. Then I'll get my USB back and the others. And I'll send the ifers, the ifa shoot from yesterday. Jimmy and I are going to conquer the ifa and get 60 plus. And then we're going to work on the uh, three spot WA to uh, get all um, perfect, perfect Xs. 30 Xs. And if that's the case, Gary, we're, we're going to, uh, you know where. Where are we? Sweet. Viva Las Vegas. I have to bring my wife, you know that, don't you? You have to tell your wife. I have to take her with me. Take her. Yeah, I will. You have to take your wife. She's got to come. What? I think so. Will you be able to travel to Las Vegas? How long is the plane flight? You can't get to Passaburn. You've got to get to Las Vegas. You should have come back from the other side of the world. Europe, about 14 hours, 15 hours. Luckily, we stopped over in Bangkok, so that broke it a bit. Yeah. So I think uh, a lot of my success is the sim arm patent pending, which has put my my trigger right back in my palm because I've got such a big hand. You know what I mean? My releases are so much better now that I'm pulling straight back under there like so backwards you, and not, not pushing in like that. I'm pulling back. So your coach didn't have anything to do with it? No, 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 no. no <laughs> I wouldn't be able to use the release if I didn't have a coach. You know what I'm saying? Just had to throw that in. No, just pull that, son. Just pull it. Just pull it. That's it. You've released it. <laughs> nah, it's been a wonderful experience with Greg and his successes. And well, we can only hope that the paper pulls their finger out and gets down here to do this. Give me the sh I should I should ring her today. Why well, don't ring her now? Should I ring her now? Also, the other lady in our club that I coach, man, she's she's going great too. Kerry, that's it. Absolutely. Oh, it's looking better. Oh, it's getting where I can't draw it back, so it's getting closer. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. This is great. We got a water boy too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to warm up now. Out in the sun. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I've got to keep drinking water so I don't get another kidney stone, man. That was uh, interesting, to say the least. All right, we're getting very close now. I just probably one more go with the twist, and I think we'll be there. And obviously, once you start shooting the bow, the thing's settled, so there's a little bit more fine-tuning to be done. But looking at the quality of these strings, I'm guessing we won't be too bad. They're very good. You want to try getting in contact with the RMS to find out where they've towed your car to to pick it up off the freeway. That, what a joke that was the other day. Four hours. And they, and they kept telling me, oh, that's nothing to do with us. And I, I well, well, who is it to do to? The roads and traffic people. Who the hell is it then? And I finally got onto a lady that knew what she was talking about, and they tracked it down. And then when I went to pick it up with the car trailer, it wasn't where they told me. <laughs> but I eventually found it. So that was a wonderful experience. <laughs> Yet on the other side of the coin, when I was in hospital, before I went to Europe, me and the, the staff at Gosford Hospital... They were exceptional. Jeez, they were good. Couldn't, couldn't speak highly enough of them. Oh, wonderful. Oh, it was amazing. Friendly, professional, efficient. It was, it was truly exceptional. Mind you, I was still pretty cranky. <laughs> that was not their fault, though, and I told them that. I'm sorry, but it's not your fault. <laughs> no, nah, they were incredible. I don't know how people can complain about our hospital system. It was amazing. And it didn't cost me a cent. It's a bit tedious, this part, viewers. You're all, you guys that have uh, done this before, you understand what's going on with that. I think it's good from the sea, though. It's not something you can just go bang, bang. I've actually got my son-in-law's bow that I've got to make a new string for. I didn't know whether I might video the whole process of making a string. Not many pop people make strings anymore, they just buy them. I, I'm a bit, it's an old glorious, it's a pretty old bow, so I'd just as soon make one because I don't know whether you'd get one for it. 
That cam lean looks pretty good. Yeah, we've got to check all the cam leans. Yeah, no, it looks pretty good. Looks good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'll let Jimmy, let Jimmy have a look at that, see what he reckons. Yeah, wow, well, that's impressive. It's, gonna, it's at least five on the rating. And then we'll get rid of it. Um, no, no, we won't. That's spot on. If I'm shooting PBs with these... Oh, no, it's not. Little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Now the draw length has come back, so I look like one of these Japanese archers on horseback that draw the bow back past their ears. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, all right, let me think. That one. <laughs> I'm just checking my arm. I can't see how you're going to get my knees. So just go. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've been having. <laughs> we've been having a. <laughs> oh, was that Tim Mac? <laughs> <laughs> we've been having a deep discussion of karate versus kung fu. And I. <laughs> Do you really pull your neck out? A little bit. <laughs> I didn't even do it very hard. Yeah. <laughs> we've, been, <laughs> we've been having a deep, deep discussion about Greg and his karate and me and my kung fu. And trying to fight a, Greg as, a guy as big as Greg from kung fu, I just break the knee. You, you, you cut, cut the trunk and the tree falls, you know. But well, I don't see how you're going to get to me. <laughs> Greg reckons I couldn't get there. I'm a little bulldog, Greg. I'm tiny. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've said, look, I said, look, you fight Jimmy first. I'll fight Jimmy. Get, <laughs> get past Jimmy. <laughs> oh, can you feel how bad that no, is? I can feel oh. it. Did I hurt you then, Greg? Sorry about that. No, no, no. I didn't do it very hard. No, no. You hurt yourself running away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was the flinch. It was the flinch. <laughs> Unexpected. So you just don't expect it. I'm an old man, but I can still move. You're, you're great. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be a prisoner. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, don't say things like that. <laughs> oh, you are stiff. Let I know. It's the, it's, it's the thing I've got. You know the, that. Oh, that uh, yeah. thing. Autoimmune. And because I hurt everywhere, it just tenses up. I'm just tense. My bum. And my leg back here are killing me. Oh, really? I thought I might go back and get the guided. Sorry, viewers, I got Greg Massage and Jimmy in oh, the peripheral right. vision. It's a bit freaky. I don't think they can see they it. They can't see it. No, it's probably oh, better that they don't. Yeah, so you better stay tuned with it. There might be a bit of grappling when me and Jimmy start coaching. When I start coaching Jimmy, we'll probably disagree on a few things. So <laughs> there might be a bit of rolling around. And, and how, <laughs> how is your neck and back? Still bad. Yeah. These poor young blokes, they're all in pieces. Yeah. Mind you, I'm not much better. Right, yeah, we we're very, very close that time. Very close. I've just got to get my head right which twist, which way I've got to twist strings. You know what it's like, Jimmy, when you go, oh, hang on. Sorry, Greg, I won't be so mean on you anymore. Yeah. It wasn't me. That's good. It was my re retreating posture. It was, it was you, you running away from me that hurt you. <laughs> running away. <laughs> this is where I get sore again. This is where your muscles join to your ribs. Or... Oh, that's where I am. Yeah. Oh, that's... Now these noises that I'm hearing in the background are a little bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Look at him. <laughs> he's got a he's, <laughs> second wind now. He's got a he's got an attack from behind, so I can't see him. No more frontal assaults. <laughs> Element of surprise is always good. Well, I think so. <laughs> Particularly when you come feel against karate. I was afraid and back right off into the corner, and they think I'm going to kill you. Going to kill you. just go bang because they're thinking I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. They're not thinking block at all. And you just go, oh, look, that, 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 and you go, bang, 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 and then you go back, now you're ahead, they have to come and get you. Oh, so you go right. back to the corner again. Because they have to, because they're going to lose if they don't come and get you now, because I'm ahead, and just get them again. All right, yeah, that looks safe to draw back. That looks pretty good. What do you reckon, Jimmy? I think that's spot on. It's a good starting point, because it's going to settle, it's going to move. Spot on to me. Looks pretty good. Like I say, it's a bit tedious getting them right, and you guys that have done this, you know know what I'm talking about. All right, so now we need to get Greg used to shooting without a, do, out of, uh, peep sight, 
because I don't really want to put that in. I want to uh, get things settled. Put a couple more into the tree. <laughs> Hopefully no. <laughs> these, are you still running, Jimmy? Or? Yep. yep. The, the, these were the, um, these are the Platinum Pierce. Now they're 28 and a half inches carbon to carbon because I've got the overdraw on. 140 grains in the front and they were shooting all over the place. Do you remember that when I was here? And what I did, I just stripped, the, stripped them off, spun them to make sure they're okay, refletched them, put new pins in because they were all shot out and I've done three PBs with them. Wow. So they're, they're, back, they're back in. And I think it was a good idea to have that 140 in with all that wind mm. as well. Maybe. So there's nothing wrong with them. Not, I'm not saying that the 120 points mm. are not... Because at one stage there, yeah, you're shooting the what were the other ones you got? The oh. VAPs with the 120s, and they were going very well yeah, too. No, they're 140. Oh, the 150. Oh, the 150. What what was the shaft you had 120s in? Uh, the, uh, the the 340. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. PPs. Well, yeah, and they're 300, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, well, but 300 with 140s and 350s with the one. 340. Well, 340s with 120s are about the same. The 340 with the 120 in it shoots flatter. And they're the ones I used in the field. Well, that's because you've got a lot of grain shaft See? and you've got 20 grains less than your tip. Yeah. So but you're they shooting. flatter in the field, so that mm. up and down doesn't make any difference because they're fl mm. a flatter shot. Well, that's, that's so why your all. 3D guys shoot 70 odd pound. That's right. Your flat trajectory, so if they make a siding error, it's minimal. Minimal. Exactly. Right. There's another one too. Right, so what's happening now? Shoot. We're going to put a few arrows through it to get the strings and the cables to settle and this see what happens. With no peep, so. Not that he's going to miss even without a peep. And I'm thinking there's not going to be too much movement in those strings, to be honest, looking at them. They look pretty good. Yeah, they are. I don't know what the material is. It doesn't look like 452X, but it's, that? that's good stuff. When Scott Bus can put me onto that, no. Stuff, I haven't touched my synchronising for three months. What was that? The 452X, the BCY. Scott, so Scott Bus can put me onto that, and it, it's it's brilliant stuff. Oh, you, we're going to be struggling to pull them out. What? No, no, they come out. They come out all right. Sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. Probably don't need to be that close. You no one's shot no, into the camera. For the camera. Is that okay. No, yes, first shot into the new into the new um. But new virginal target. Lucky I'm using sexual cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little tip for you at home. Yep. The old KY, the great arrow lube. I never even thought of that. Really? Because that'd it's be water based, wouldn't it? Yeah. A tube, yeah. And I reckon you could fill that. You could fill that five to eight times, I reckon. It's got to be water based, otherwise the condoms would disintegrate. Yeah. The silicon <laughs> doesn't reckon. Well, the woman would disintegrate. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, the draw length looks all right. Perfect. That's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm relieved. Oh, it sounds Jesus, good. Jesus, quiet, isn't it? That you like that? Good. You haven't got your stabilizers on either. That'll even help. It's a nice thud, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit paranoid with the sound of a bow. I've got to tell you, I really like a bow that's sounds good. Thud, quiet and a good thud, you know, and no harmonic vibrations. And I think that's a big part of the tuning, whether the tune's right or not. Yours sounds heaps nicer now. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Just a thump. Mm. Sounds heaps better. Mm. Sounded good before, and now it sounds even better. It's going to sound even hectic with the stabilizers on yeah. it. Pat was surprised when I said that all the uh, serving came undone under the cans. But you look at every, every factory point bow yeah. back at the club, yeah. everyone's starting to separate. And they all bought them in the last, like your prevails yeah. Yeah. or podiums that they bought in the last 12 months. Yeah. It's, they're, it's all separated. Well, it's because they're made by a machine and the, the serving's done with the ca cables, the strands in the string are all straight. And as soon as you twist them, the string gets smaller. Yeah. That's, that's what happens. Right Peanut! Peanut at that one. And you know how I did that one? I looked at the tip. Ah, he's doing a bit of um, instinctive, gap shooting. Instinctive shooting. Gap shooting. Yeah. And I just looked at the tip to see where it was pointed. That's what they call gap shooting. You, 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 you shoot line your point, use yeah. the point of your arrow. No, 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 no. I didn't use the point of the arrow with oh. the target. I just looked at the point 
and said that's where it's pointed. Oh, I see. That's instinctive shooting. That's easy. That's instinctive. what they do when they bear bait, aren't they? Don't yeah. they use the arrow shaft and the tip or something? We should go down to the club and have you have you got a recut like a bear bow? Bear bow? Yeah. We should go down and do that. Just for the heck of it? We got the long bow. Yeah. Shoot under for a leg. rest. <laughs> that's right. We should do some under leg shooting. That's right. See who's the best at that. I'll beat you all. Wow, it just smells so sharp. Yeah. I don't know if that's because the stabiliser's not on there. Sounds, sounds nice and crisp. Very nice. So we could do that. See, did you see that? See me go like yeah. that? That's yeah. That's now part of the process. Uh, that's, that's what I was saying. That, that's it's not even there. That's why you didn't get phased at the Nationals, because you put that into your shop, shop process. Yeah. It wasn't like separate. String matches are so awesome. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Just in time for the photo shoot. Oh, yeah. That's oh, synchronising, still spot on. Is your string touching your nose though? Oh, that's because you're just pointing down. Mm. We'll that, I'll do one now and see. That's synchronising spot on still, hasn't moved. How does the poundage feel, Greg? Does it feel a bit lighter? Um, oh, I can't let me see. Well, it might a bit, I don't the know. The axle axle is shorter and... No, it's looking perfect. It looks yeah, really that's, good. That's my lips on, my nose yeah, is that's on. That's spot on. Ooh, into the black. Well, there's a tip for you compounders out there, man. If you need strings, Pat Coglin's a man. They are, the best, they? they are beautiful. Really good. Again. Yeah, look at that. See? Can't help yourself. Yeah. You have to do it every time. But th th this is a good thing, and this is what you have to do when, particularly when you start something new in your technique. You've got to keep doing it and get it into the technique and like I say, Greg's now correcting his peep that he was doing for ages for the Nationals. But that'll slow... Well, that'll until yesterday. Yeah, that'll, that'll get out real quick. So that string stop's still not close enough either, and it's still real quiet. Mm -hmm. That needs to go closer as well, but... Close. And it it's, it's the string stop. That's because oh, yeah. your, yeah, 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 your yeah. axle axle's changed a bit. Well, the... <coughs> the, the, my draw seems it, fine. It seems fine, yeah. Yeah, it seems all right. The synchronising spot on and it didn't move. Like you said, it just come, must have come straight in. Yeah. The, the five, seven, seven and five eighths uh, brace height, which was spot on. The only thing is the, the axle axles, what, inch and a, half an inch, a bit longer. But half an inch is nothing really in the bigger picture of things. Must have been, it must have been shorter. Yeah. Half an inch shorter. It's half an inch shorter, sorry, than what it was. It was 41, it's, it's just a 40 and a half now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. But like I say, my OK's... Thirty-nine and a half. It sounds nice. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get out and we'll put a uh, we'll put a peep in it. We'll put a peep in it, people. Big pun. Put we'll a we'll put a peep it? in. Were you happy with that? Yeah, yeah. I just I just wanted a few shots through it to get things to settle, and nothing much has moved. To be perfectly honest, it may in time. That even that cameline looks pretty good, Jimmy. Yeah, it looks It might have a little bit on it. Might have to put a bit, straighten it up just a touch. They're stuck in there, are they? Yeah, that's the problem with you. Fresh target. Fresh target at that range. We'll just get that side out of the way. We don't want to damage that. Always a good idea to pull any unnecessary stuff off your bow when you're doing this sort of work. <coughs> Righty, yeah. So what I do want to do first, we've got to adjust that string stop. Put the peep in. There's something else I was going to do, it hasn't slipped my mind at the moment. Let me flip the blow over that way, it sits a bit, rests a bit better that way. I've actually touched on information regarding the timing, the synchronising that I was going to do a video on. This is the trouble when you're doing things with bows, everything relates to everything else. It's very hard to break it down into one specific subject matter. They all sort of uh, have a lot to do with each other. But while we're here today, I'm going to do put a few more videos up for you guys to watch. I'm going to do the, I'll do another one on the timing, the synchronising, just to make that sort of more specific. And I'm going to do one on the tiller. And that's going to be an interesting one. The tiller's always controversial, isn't it, Jimmy? Yeah. I've got some ideas on that. And if, 
a few things I've found out with the modern bows, with the parallel limb bows, the rules change a bit with them. Not that there's any rules as such, you've just got to do what works for you, but you've got to investigate all, all angles. Very important to do that. Not block everything out and just go your own way. Because even after 20, 25 years in the sport, I'm still finding out stuff. I'm thinking, oh, that's a good idea. Like Mr. Buscombe, he comes up with a few good things, and you've got to listen to guys like him. He knows what he's doing. You only have to watch him shoot. He must have enjoyed being on camera the other day. Jimmy, he actually smiled a few times. I think so. <laughs> I'll be smiling if I shot a 6.50. Yeah, it's unreal, isn't it? I did, I shot it on the Monday. It's too late then. Too late then. So, so um, <coughs> he shot a 55 in his first end. Yeah. And shot a 55 in his last end. He's a choker! But in the middle, <laughs> he just got 58, 59. I think he got 60, 60, 59. Oh, did he? Geez, his PB went begging that day, didn't it? He shot 255s, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, there's his PB. He only three points off a of PB and he shot 255s. That's crazy, isn't it? The last end of the day was a 57. Yeah. So the just shot. He was getting tired at the end, though. He shot a 339. I'll tell you what, he just quietly... In the, in the second. His daughter's good, too. Wow. She's, well, she can sit there and she's amazing. She's like anything. Did you see her all day? Yeah, but she shoots. She shoots brilliant. I said to her, why didn't you come here to teach Anthony Allen another lesson? <laughs> oh, Can we say his name? A bit late now, you might have to. Death Shadows, but. Yeah, right, what I've got here, I've got the old string, because I'm going to use that as a reference for the knock pot position. Oh, just so that we can. He does. Man, you're good. Oh, it's just what I do. Just. <laughs> you know, this He's not being sarcastic, hard. is he? <laughs> How does he do it? I'm going to put your coaching fees up, Greg. How does he do it? Or double them? I'm going to double them. Double them. Twice nothing, still nothing. <laughs> <coughs> Is that what that's for? That that's separates a string. That's what oh, they put in there when they make it. There, right, yep. Right, that's, right. that's the idea of that is to separate the string so you can put your peep in, yeah. which makes sense. It does. It does. That way you're not counting strands. We've got to come down a fair bit on that. So what we'll do, we just take the pressure off this main string again. There was something else I was, ah, the cam loin. That's what I was going to do when I did this. It's just got, it's just got a little bit too more, too much. Remember when I first came to Aaron last year, the cam loin I had? <laughs> Aaron says, oh no, the string's still on the bow. It was that bad, wasn't it? No, yeah, it took a while to get that straight too. We'll try that. It doesn't, you, you can't, the more you, you wind on to get your cam dead straight, the more you drag things across. You can only go so much. They've always got a bit of a lean on them. Unless you've just got to shoot through a bow like mine, of course. But <laughs> well, Scotty Buscombe's teaching everyone a lesson. Well, too, Scott's, Scott shoots an okay. I've uh, picked his brain for a bit of information on it. It's always handy. Hasn't the Siminator got one too? He is, uh, so, yeah. um, what are we calling him now? Okay, yeah, it's a um, Matt Martin, I think. Yeah. Away. Yeah, well, Martin started it 18 years ago with the Scepters. Uh, yeah, well, the Scepters started all that back in. Well, Catherine shot a Scepter in 2002. That's when the shoot through sort of started. Yeah. He said there was a. He had that PSE. Pretty I'm just separating this string to drop the peep in. Oh man, I'll be glad to get rid of that uh, peep twisting problems. I was worried the whole time Greg was away, but he handled it very well. Like I say, he made it start part of his shop, shop process to correct it. And in 20 odd years of doing this with compounds, I've never had so much drama with a peep twisting on a bow. Unbelievable. I think, I think the string had had it. I it had me beat, it really did. And I still think the peep twisting is a bit of an issue with your, 
your groups of moving around. Here, here's my OCD kicking in, overthinking things. If your peep, say, five mil long, and your lens is at the front of the peep, where your hole is, if that peep's twisted, then the distance to the back, okay. sorry guys, <laughs> <laughs> the, if your peep is twisted, the distance from the actual aperture to the back of the peep is longer. So it's very hard if you've got an oval view to look through, you're not actually centering it, you could be a bit left or right. Well, uh, so I don't know. It was distorting. If, if, the, yeah. if the peep sight is like this, your gold target that you're looking at is circular. But as that turns, it becomes, a, the, the actual goal target becomes an oval because it's getting distorted by the lens. Mm. And when you're shooting the way Greg's shooting and the groups he's shooting, you can't have things like that. Well, I'm thinking of even um, popping that out and just shoot like, I think all the other guys shoot with that with nothing. No, uh, no peeps like, no clarifier. No, no, nothing, they just shoots. Yeah. I have to use a verifier or I can't see the dot on my scope because of my age and my eyes. It's, a, it's annoying, but and guys with glasses, they must have all sorts of troubles. Shoot. Not, Are you allowed to wear contacts or glasses? Or? Particularly when it rains because you end up with spots on your glasses and... Uh, this spiderweb, you doesn't look the best. Uh, a messy spiderweb, you know what that is? Redback. I don't think redbacks make webs, do they? Yeah, yeah, they do? Oh, okay. All right, well, I was wrong the other day. Well, I reckon they're the ones that are all around your arm, you know, under the arm, the handles of your garbage bins. I'm just going to put one, to, one knock around, one knot, knot around this peep, just to locate it. Jimmy's doing a bit of pest control work here so I don't get bitten. Just to control that uh, peep so we can get it in the spot, in the right place before we start anchoring it in properly. That was a bit of a dangerous place standing up against there. I'm a bit concerned about that. It's the wonderful part about living in Australia. All our bugs and spiders and... Right, yeah, we've got that peep in. It's got a little bit of a twist. It's not, not much point in um, stressing too much about it at the moment. We need to shoot it again and just see where it's going to end up. I haven't locked it in correctly, fully yet. I'm just going to move this string stop further up. It's a little bit too far away from the string. That should shut it up even more. Just a little note for your target guys too. The judges will pick you up if your stopper is actually touching your string. All right, Greg, you want to put stabilizers on them? We'll... Well, we, we want to finish with this first, or you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, have a go first, then see how it feels, right. and then we'll swap mine over. To see how what are you, Greg, going to have a shot with your stabilizers? Yeah. You'll have to give him another massage when he finishes. <laughs> <laughs> He's already smiling. He's got the, he's got the lube. <laughs> there, yeah, try that, Greg. Now, all things being equal, your your sight settings will be close enough that you can use your twenty or whatever. Uh, you want a sight, probably. That's a good idea. Just go twenty will do. Oh, Make it. Eh? Well, that'll do even better. All right, final test of the new string. <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty much it. We're just going to do some fine tuning with the peep. It looks like it's been uh, very successful as, as much as I didn't want to do the whole lot in one go, but it, it's probably a better way to do it, really. I've done your string stop. So we're going to, uh, we're going to just do some fine tuning for his peep, probably a few twists in and out of the strings, and another week or two, you've got to have another look at your timing, uh, sorry, your synchronising, because the, they can settle. And a tip on your synchronising, I probably should put this in the synchronising video, but check it regularly, I'll tell you now, because it, it moves so slowly that you don't notice it, but when you pick it up and you set it up, all of a sudden you'll go bang and your stop's going to come back again. Just a little tip to uh, keep regular checks on your cam, synchronising at draw, full draw.
All right, that's about it for the moment. All right, well, let's get one shot of the new setup. And we'll call it um, a video. You might have to edit a bit of long stuff out of that one. Oh, no, I think oh, it's a good one. There's a bit of a I roll. There's a bit out where he attacked me. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> I'll put his neck out. <laughs> you put it in, but you just put like Dim Mac Kung nah. Fu. <laughs> so how many years were you Australian Kung Fu cha uh, Karate Champion group? Oh, over a seven year period I was in the Australian team. I think I won three out of seven, but I was second. And a was 60, in the final every year. A 60 year old man just hurt you. Yeah. But, but now I'm nearly 60. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you wait till next time. You wait till I'm ready. It was, a, it was a surprise attack. <laughs> you, you wait till you're not ready. <laughs> you, learn, you learn a lot of tricks in my job. <laughs> I saw that. That's what I thought. That's why I backed off real quick because I thought I was going back to the cells. Diversionary tactic, see? And then attack. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, that peep came back dead straight. Near enough. This will be the test. Where is it? Oh, it's straight. <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Excellent. That's a good good start. There'll be very, very minor changes. See, I nearly went there. I nearly did it you again. You nearly did it again. Now I'll listen to the bow. I didn't hear it. I was too excited watching the peep. Oh, look at that. That sounds yeah, nice, doesn't it? That yeah. sounds very crisp, beautiful. Right, one more. Excellent, one more. Just one? Just one. That's looking good. What does happen with strings over time is different temperatures and stuff like that can muck them up until they settle completely. But at the moment, it's looking really good. That's beautiful. Oh, oh how good is that? And look at the sight settings are 18 metres. Look at that. Spot on still. Still spot on. Excellent. Is this 18? Oh, yeah, that's true. It mightn't be 18. <laughs> oh, my, my 15, 18 and 20 are Virtually the same. same. The same right, guys, so that Excellent. Is, um, Greg's changing the string. I'm Don't a happy like man. That one? Hit the like button for us. Well, leave, well, leave a comment for Gary. Leave a comment for Greg. Tell us what you think. You know how long the poundage has gone down? Mm. I'll have to wind the scope up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, so you, when I go back, I'll know you, that Your sight settings at your longer distances will tell yeah, you. That's right. Absolutely. All right, guys, so see you in the next one. Stay tuned.